Hi there. What we're going to do today is we're going to present an example, our second example, for the one-way analysis of variance using the p-value approach. And in this video, we're going to make use of the software Jamovi to answer such. So let's have our example here. A researcher wishes to try three different techniques to lower blood pressure of individuals diagnosed with high blood pressure. The participants are randomly assigned to three groups. The first group takes medication, the second group takes exercise, and the third group follows a special diet. After four weeks, the reduction in each person's blood pressure is recorded. And at alpha 0.05, test the claim that there is no difference among the means. So we're gonna show you the tables below here. So here they are. So we have uh, medication, exercise and diet, the number which you're seeing here are the uh, reduction in each person's blood pressure. So we're gonna follow the four step procedure. Recall the four steps as in number one, stating the null and alternative hypothesis on the alpha level. Number two is determining what sampling, uh, or rather what statistical tool to use, the assumptions of that tool, and of course the p-value uh, after uh, doing all the stuff that you need to do. Number three is about you know determining the decision rule, and number four is the conclusion. So let's get onto it. It's gonna st we're gonna start with of course step number one. Um, we need to understand that the de that the uh, situation has two variables there one dependent and one independent variable. So the dependent variable is the blood pressure and the independent variable are the techniques to lower blood pressure, which we have three of them, exercise, medication, and uh, special diet. We need to write down the uh, hypothesis first, the null hypothesis in particular, saying that they're all equal, they're not, the, the reduction are equal in all three. Or in statement form, there is no significant difference among the mean blood pressure of participants provided by three different techniques to lower blood pressure. So if we're going to look back at the problem, how about the alternative hypothesis? So it doesn't really give us uh, something wherein one technique is higher than the other, but we're just saying that at least one of them is, there. at least there's one significant difference among them. All right. So in which one is it? Uh, we're going to show that in a while. So um, the alpha level is by default 0 0.05. So in this step two, we're going to make use of Jamovi, but I'm not going to click that first. We're going to do this in Jamovi. Okay, so let's have some steps back. We need data on this table here because we're going to input this in Jamovi. So recall and how we put that down or how we... Um, put it here. I'm going to double click this. I'm going to name this uh, the technique. And I'm going to put the reduction in blood pressure here, the second variable. Just extend it a bit. So we're going to write this down for the technique. We're going to call this med. And there are five of them, right? Yeah, five. I'm going to copy this five times over here. We have exercise. I'm going to call it EXE. Uh, why not? And uh, diet five times. And we're going to write down the BP reduction rate in each of them. For the med, we have 10, 12, 9, 15. Okay, 10, 12, 9, 15. And the last one is 13. Okay, so if I did double check, there's some anything wrong here. 10, 12, 9, 15, 13. 10, 12, 9, 15, 13. That's right. 6, 8, 3, 0, 2. Okay, 6, 8, 3, 0, 2. 6, 8, 3, 0, 2. All right. And then for the diet, 5, 9, 12. 5, 9, 12. And 8 and 4. Yeah. Oh, I forgot the 8. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to apply... One way ANOVA to determine uh, if there's a significant difference. So recall our flow chart. We're going to click this first, then ANOVA. I click the one way ANOVA. And uh, I'm going to wait for some time. Okay, here it is. 
and by default the welsh anova is already checked but we want to input the things that we want to input remember the dependent variable is the bp reduction and the technique is our grouping variable uh, before we will watch and see the p-value um, found here we want to check first the homogeneity and normality test just to determine or specifically first the normality test i'm going to look at the value of shapiro wilk and hoping that that value should be greater than 0 0.05 or whatever alpha is our alpha is 0 0.05 um, if it's less than 0 0.05 it will not be normal and here you go shepherd wilk is 0 0.44 therefore there's no violation in the assumption of normality we can go ahead and check the homogeneity test check the levines and um, what we want to hope is the levines is greater than 0 0.05 there we go um it's 0 0.689 so remember if it's less than 0 0.05 we're going to make use of the welsh um welsh anova but in this case we're going to use fishers because we assumed that it is equal and um Levine's test agrees with that with, with us so here we go um for the p value is 0 0.004 uh there is a need to run a postdoc test because our p-value signifies that it's significant so let's go ahead and click postdoc tests since we have used fisher's test that we assume equal variances we're going to make use of the 2k um, postdoc test over here to determine where it is and um, another click the descriptive tables i'm gonna hide now the assumption checks because we're done with them so they're now hidden should be hidden it's, it will take some some time okay here we go so, uh, and then of course, flag significant comparisons for the post-hoc test that would make things even easier to uh, pinpoint. So here we go. Um, if we're gonna um, choose between diet and versus medicine and diet versus exercise, it doesn't really have any um, difference. So meaning, you know, if you're given a choice between diet or something, uh, it doesn't really matter because their effect or the the number of reduction time is not that much different when you compare it with the diet but notice when you compare the medicine and the exercise it's significant okay your p-value is 0 0.003 and you have a mean, a mean difference of eight um telling you that you know you're gonna go back here in the group descriptions since the significant pair is the, diet, is the medicine and exercise, we can see that the exercise is 3.8, the mean is, and the medicine is 11.8. So, you know, if you're given a choice between taking up medicine and exercise, you know, it, 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 this is a kind of good, um, good information because exercise is not uh, really effective when it comes to reducing the BP of a person compared to this medicine, whatever the source is. So... Uh, you know but there is some setback like medicines may be expensive or such but definitely what this table wants to show is that when you're given a choice between medicine and exercise you must always choose medicine because it lowers your bp at a significant uh, higher rate than the exercise all right so that's our that's our um understanding with this table so let's go back to our um our slides here so we're done with step one remember we're gonna go ahead with step number two step number two shows this one which is uh, precisely the same as ours uh, we need to run a post hoc test right after but before that let's show step three so st step three oh, uh, clearly shows that there's a significant difference and that we need to reject the null hypothesis at 0 0.05 level of significance Therefore, the mean blood pressure of participants is not the same. Hence, a 2K test is needed in order for us to determine where the difference lies. And here we go. It's exactly the same as what we are presenting here. So therefore, the p-value is between medication and exercise. Therefore, there's a significant difference in the means of blood pressure for medication and exercise. And um, as was seen in the group descriptives, medicine is much better than exercise. So that ends our example number two, um, unless there's a the next page here. Nope, there's none. So uh, thank you very much. We're going to see each other again in example three. And in that example, we're going to make use of the Kreskel Wallace H test, which is the non-parametric counterpart, counterpart of one-way ANOVA.
okay so thank you very much and i'll be seeing you